Hello and welcome to today's NinjaTrader ecosystem event, how you can speed up your professional trading career. My name is Thomas and I'm a platform representative here at NinjaTrader. Now, before we start this webinar, I have a few housekeeping notes. Now, this webinar is presented by NinjaTrader LLC, which is the technology company for, for responsible for developing and supporting the NinjaTrader trading software. Brokerage-related questions should be directed to the NinjaTrader brokerage team using the phone number or email on the screen. And if you're new to NinjaTrader, please make sure you sign up for your free NinjaTrader demo with real-time market data. Our platform is always free for advanced charting, strategy back testing, and trade simulation. You can get your free demo account by following the link. Now, before I turn over the mic to Adam, it is important to understand that there is substantial risk in futures foreign, foreign currency and options trading, and is not suitable for every investor. It is possible to lose all or more than one's initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And also, please remember that these trading sessions are not solicitation, but simply educational in nature. Now, thank you again for joining us today. Without further ado, it's my pleasure to welcome to the Ninja Webinar Room, Adam Fisk. Thanks, Thomas. Hi, everybody. I'll just bring up my screen. Uh, thanks for making the time to attend. We're in the play zone. Who's that buying and why? Okay, second deviation. Is that what they're interested in? So I'm going to put that down to a market maker, not a bottom picker. What's happened is buyers have come and behind that and added. Now, see that 20? They might be out for their profit. Okay, so now we look for the opportunity to go short. So they bought and they made their small profit. They waited for others to come in and boom, you're short. On side, easy as that. The long's off side, the line in the sand is those multiple failures. You can see them just up here. This is attracting more buyers still. Why? Because they pushed it up. So there's keenness to get on the long side. Watch them get hurt. Comes some liquidation. It's about playing where you can get an edge. All right, so let's see if we can take this out. So see how this was all developed from only playing once it gets into our field. Right, so in the back of my mind is who's in control? Sellers. You know, I'm not going to be tentative on my taking of profits on short trades. And let's see if they bust a move here. Here we go. See them push down trying to find liquidity, i.e. where traders will give up. So I've taken some partials because we're at the second deviation of CME VWAP and I'm holding to see if we can really bust through. You can probably see the way that the DOM now sped up. See how there's not much selling going in, but the market makers now trying to really create panic. The speed in which they're moving that spread down. Right now there's slow pause. Why? Okay, so the psychology is stop it for a sec because everyone who maybe was going to panic goes, ah, oh, I'll wait a bit longer. Now, the more you do this, the more you will create a greater degree of pain. So when you hit those pauses, just understand the psychology behind it. Absolutely orchestrated. See how bottom pickers have come in? Yeah, okay, so see how the market makers are really starting to make it ugly for sellers? So expansion is that point where you go, well, I think everyone knows what's going on. See that big sell there? That's some late shorts entering and they'll get torched. So why am I still in? Comes from the prep. When you know who's ruling the roost here, we're siding with those and you just have to understand how they get other players in. All those sellers that I talked about from Hong Kong, all on side. It's all right, some slippage just came through, which slows up selling in the short term. Um, oh, and so where I was getting to with that is also this tape reading. I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, that quote, famous quote by Paul Tudor Jones. He's a great macro trader. So even though he's a macro trader, he's quoted as saying, hey, I'm a slave to the tape. Now, so my question to you is, are you using all these things? Do you know how to use them like the professionals do? So can you spot the difference between amateurs and professionals? What will really help you to do this is if you specialize. Because when you specialize, you really start to compound the effects of a narrowly focused attention. Um, you know, I'm sure 
we all are aware that you don't see someone who competes at the Olympics in javelin jump over into the swimming pool. So your competitive, competitive advantage develops by specialising and you'd just be amazed how much you notice about the professionals when you do this, provided you're using the right tools. How do you work out how the big money traps the little guys? A focused view in one instrument using many data points you just can't help but connect all the dots. It's just inevitable. And it then becomes your daily job to solve who is going to get forced into exiting losing trades. This is my trading workstation. Why am I showing you this? All those monitors, that's just for trading one instrument. I only trade one instrument, which in my case is um, 6A, which is the Australian dollar, US dollar futures. And what happens when you do this, because it's the same instrument that you're focused on every single day, you just gain a, an observation edge. Right? You become an expert in how it behaves. And that's how you can spot the difference between professionals and the amateurs. What's scrolling in the background is your daily game plan right? for, for working out who those traders will be or get forced to exit. You're seeing one game plan for every trading day for each trading year. The point I'm making is because the only thing you do every day, you just can't help but get really damn good at it, right? Makes sense? Your daily game plan lays out for you how you trade the upcoming session. When it comes time to trade, what you're doing is looking for cues then from the market to align with this game plan that you've come up with. There are many ways in which traders get trapped. Right, so I want to give you resources to help you. I've got live trading clips for you illustrating the um, different ways that you can benefit from traders urgently exiting their losing trades. So I'm going to put a link in the chat right now. And to help you look at markets, how the professionals do, so you can solve who and how traders get trapped, it's going to help to know what skills the pros have. So I'm going to whack another link. And, or you can just go to bosstrading.com.au and it lists the advanced skills that the professionals use. So let me just pop that in the, in the chat also for you. So all it is, you'll see the highlights um, trade from what's referred to as my play. I didn't come up with the term playbook. Um, so in case you had not uh, familiar with what it means, playbook trades are uh, trades where that you take based on the market behaving in a, you know, in a number of unique ways that you recognise. You know the odds of the trade, payout potential, every aspect of trade you know. Uh, the magic of playbook trades is clarity on how the market needs to behave to you to enter it. And I think even Roger said it best, you know, I just wait until there's money lying in the corner and all I have to do is go over there and pick it up. I do nothing in the meantime. The fastest way you progress trading is nailing one playbook trade at a time. Get your reps up. Think of like you know, a real brand original or fake. Who Can you tell the difference? I certainly can't. Imagine an expert. An expert can. Think of a football coach who started out as a player. They've had a successful career, learned the game, gained experience, and over time they've broadened their skills to, to see the big picture in order to be a coach. But think of then the star recruit who comes in playing for a major sports team and they suppose 
they focus on a really specific role. Don't they? A star recruit is typically really well rewarded for doing that one specific role. So you can think of that as a guide to how to approach trading. So first become incredibly familiar with a single playbook trade and then move on to the next. What you'll find is as you develop, new playbook trades will overlap with playbook trades already developed. So before we hit the charts, I'm going to run through some workable um, examples for you that you can take away. If you'd like to receive one free trading lesson every week via email on how to profit when other traders bail out of losing trades, just go to bosstrading.com.au and sign up for the free lessons. Okay, so let's show you through some trading approaches. All right, so in the, I guess, the little blurb that you would have received about today's, about today's um, webinar, you would have heard the term open road, All right? So what do we mean by open road? So if you think of driving a car, you know, you've got city driving, stop, start, stop, start. Maybe there's... Um, you know, a U-turn you have to make or a detour, all these types of things. And when it gets relaxing and straightforward is when you get out into the open road where there is a tra where are no traffic lights. And that's how I like to think about trading. So what you can see in front of you is um, this is a, 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 <clears throat> a bunch of different what I call long-term profiles. The most important thing that you need to take away from this, I'll just show you. So all this business in here, right? So I'm assuming you can see my mouse okay. Just look to the right and see how the market is constantly going back and forth. That's that city driving. By contrast, have a look at this move here right at the extreme. This is the open road. All right, so what's the difference between the two? So the differences between the two are where you've got lots and lots of traders who like doing business both buyers and sellers that here it's diff if you're a directional trader and you're looking for the market to move in your favor the the problem with these highly densely traded areas is people it's just going to ping pong around right it's very hard to get any sort of price movement that moves your way if you want aggressive price movement you get into a trade and it just really starts to develop You'll find that's the case when you get into these very low accepted areas. And let me just explain a couple of things here. This is where traders want to do business, right? Down here, it's where they don't. So just imagine that you're a buyer, right? And suddenly the price is this in this area and you want to get out of your trade. The problem with getting out is up here, it was easy everyone's happy to do business in here it's not the case and the problem happens that if it's an area where no one wants to do business you won't be the only buyer who wants to get out there there'll be a cascade it'll be like a stampede and that's what forces and creates this aggressive price movement right so if you want the biggest bang for buck trades that's where you can find them, right? And these low acceptance areas appear all over the place. And, and what's happening is you're just basically moving into an area where suddenly a whole lot of traders need to all scramble and compete with each other. And they're constantly fighting to try to get out. And that's what pushes price. I mentioned the commitments of traders report. It's also known as COT, right? It's commitments of traders. So I said, okay, well, I trade just the Australian dollar. So this is actually data that's available in NinjaTrader. You just have to make sure that you turn on, um, well, there's a setting in options to turn it on to make sure it retrieves it. So the red line is representative of the commercials. All right, so in the Aussie dollar, who have you got participating? You've got people who are hedging, you've got market makers, that's sort of more your commercial type participant. And then if you've, you've, of course, you've got the speculators. 
they are, who are they? They're, they're the people who basically are punting on direction, aren't they? Can you notice the difference here in commercials versus speculators? These are both speculators. Is that a clear difference between what commercials are doing and what speculators are doing? And if you had to make an informed decision about the market, who are you going to side with? Are you going to side with the commercials or are you going to side with the speculators? All right, so it's going to be the commercials, isn't it? So let's go back to that long-term profile. And we'll just come up to speed. Now, remember how I said using lots of different data points? Can you see this last bar, how it's come down to this area? Do you know what that purple fuchsia line is? That's actually monthly VWAP going back to just before the COVID sell-off. All right. See how the market went down to it and then moved away from it immediately? What else happened? Can you see how we're in that open road type environment? Have a look up here where it's really congested and compare it to this, this area here. See the difference in price movement? See how the market's just shot up? And I'll show you on, on some other views as well. So you've got also, what do we know? Commercials versus speculators. Who do you think is getting caught as this market rapidly moves to the upside? So all I'm doing there is I'm starting to take multiple data points. I'm not just guessing that commercials are going to take the market higher. I'll actually wait for it to happen, which I'll get to, but I'm starting to put those points together. All right. So that's that's really key. And I and I know you might think, geez, how are you thinking about this monthly VWAP? Well, it gets back to this is the only thing I look at every day. So you, you can see a gazillion lines. They're all just areas that I know about where traders react for whatever reason. Then there's something else I talked about as well. Knowing, and this is what professionals do, knowing what, where big um, inventory is in the market. So this is just a little bit of a cheat code here, which is not something I study. I can go into footprint charts, but then I want to show you something. Can you see this is, this is what they call a delta profile. And what it's showing there is there's, a, there's aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers, right? So when you're looking at a footprint chart, that's what it's showing you. But essentially without confusing you what i'm doing there is just looking at where some of the big chunks of aggressive buying and selling are so this market has pushed up very rapidly up to all up all through here it's the open road but what can't it get through it's had a crack at it but it can't successfully do what it can't successfully get through these sellers so this where i've put that arrow those sellers are anchoring the market to the downside all right, so all, what, what I've done there is just take lots of different data points. And this is all information that you have at your fingertips um, when using the right tools that professionals do. So I'm going to go now and show you some, some additional pieces of um, content. And, we, and this is that game planning, right? Putting, solving who's going to get caught. So footprint charts. So this is something, I've got a number of different settings for these. And this is a very intense one. So this is the volumetric bars. What price bars don't show you is where the aggressive buying and where the aggressive selling is. Right, but you can see and just use the color coding as a guide. And this is quite straightforward to see what's happening. Right. So this is that that area that I was showing you on that longer term chart. So what's going on down here? Remember, this is where there aren't a lot of there isn't a lot of acceptance. 
But can you see how this group here, so the market goes down, can you see all of these sellers here who are short? All right, so you've got all these short sellers. Then you've even got some late short sellers. And then there's a rip to the upside. And look at all the covering that takes place, in particular, right up here. So this is the urgent exiting traders. And what we know is that this is an area where the market just went virtually straight up, right? So I'm taking that view and all I'm doing is connecting dots. Let's look at some other things. So this is a weekly, sorry, it's a daily, we'll turn it on to the weekly. Um, this is a 500 tick chart. So if you think back to the other points that I was making, uh, all of these things are available in Ninja Traders Order Flow Plus suite of tools. Right, so remembering those points I was just making before, what can you see about weekly VWAP here? So this is the yellow one. So this is volume weighted average price, but based on a weekly time frame. Right, so and it's got deviations. Look where weekly VWAP anchors to the downside. Now it's like, well, hang on, Adam, you're just showing me a chart that's going down, but you've been trading to the upside. Well, we can trade both sides, can't we? Because doesn't the market trap traders on both sides? but it's knowing that relationship and who's doing what. So you're looking for both the sellers to come in and, and you know, for a period of time, get on top and then to get forced out. And we're looking for the open road, remember? So see this move here? So you've got weekly VWAP and then open road. See that? Through low acceptance. One thing that's that's for traders is they just everything. They go, oh well, I need to sh I need to be selling here. I need to be buying here. I need to be selling here, etc., etc. It's just not how the market. Like, that's how you define a game. You're not trying to play badminton, basketball, and table tennis. Just play basketball if you're a basketballer. So I'm looking for see all this business here. What do you think that move there is? That's a whole bunch of long traders who've now spewed into the market, right? So you can provide liquidity to urge and exiting traders. Weekly VWAP. So the new week starts. Look, same deal, can't get above. This is something that's really fascinating about markets. There's what I call the once bitten, twice shy. Have a think about if you've been in a trade and it's gone horrendously against you, right? It's gone really really quite horribly wrong and you wait for it to come back and what do you promise i promise that when it gets back to break even i'll get out all right so does everyone know that feeling and then of course it gets back to brave break even but you don't get out do you it's like oh actually now it's working out it, it, it was right i'm gonna hold it so guess what this is That's these traders who sat through that, waited for it to come back. But you know what's at the forefront of their mind? All the pain they experienced when it went against them. So the second time round, through the open road and they spew out of the market. So many things that you can observe by taking this layered approach joining the dots and putting the whole piece, all the pieces of the puzzle together. It happens by, by sticking to one instrument. So let's say I'm going into today and now I just turned off the, the data connection before, um, or actually it was during when we started. So we've got a similar scenario, haven't we? We've had this really strong move up because this is a 500 tick chart, right? So I'll show you what, how, what this looks like in terms of size on um, my execution chart, but this is the same thing. Look at this. 
sellers get caught, all right? So you can see that the market, see the relationship between weekly VWAP all through the course of the week. So the long opportunities are below it, aren't they? And then what happens as we get up? Late buyers come in, chase it, and then they get they get churned out of the market. So in this scenario, why would you want to get long here? You wouldn't, would you? See all the business there? It's not the open road, is it? Where are the good spots to trade? Like, where would you want to define where you trade? Probably up here, in there, and in here. Simple enough and avoid all of that. So what does that look like on an execution um, view? So I'll just uh, find, grab one of those. Well, now these are all levels, all right? But I've just now focused in on arch of a much lower setting tick chart. If you want to know what a tick chart is, just change the word tick to trade. All right. So it in this case this is a, a low setting. It's a 25 tick chart. So every time 25 trades go through, not 25 lofts or anything like that, 25 trades, it prints a bar. So this is that monthly VWAP going back to just just before um, the COVID experience. And where are the aggressive moves? The work. So this is now looking at the, the this is taking in consideration the all the initial shorts to get pummeled. So remember this was all low low acceptance here. So look at that move. Right? And then there'll be again those sellers who are still in the market. And I, I define where I want to play. So this is another place to play. And then it gets above this level, and there's the next one. And these are taken from those big picture views where the open road is. And all I'm doing is recognizing where traders are underwater and have to urgently exit. Urgently exiting traders is what pushes price really aggressively. What else can you notice from this? This is um, VWAP just for the US stock market period, right? So that's the Aussie dollar, but I'm actually running VWAP here for that session. Can you see how, don't worry about VWAP, look at the first deviation, right? So in here, this is the first, so this is a deviation one and two. So initially, the market can't get, see, it's like, get can't get through, no, can't get through, time, oh, now we can. Here's another data point, right, multiple points of evidence. Remember, we're looking for those long opportunities. Remember that? Coming back to the COT and um, data and all the sellers who are offside. Look what happens to this huge sell here. Bang, taken straight offside. Look at how aggressively it moves up. And it's what? In the open road. And then once we actually have that big seller, see how the market goes and tries again. So the market wants to con have multiple attempts to move through levels. And then what? It stays within this first and second deviation. And look at the open road here. Bang. And then what happens up here? New buyers who are seeing this market going, great game busters do what? Pile in. All right, and see how it's trying to get back below this deviation. Oh, looks like it's gonna do it. No, it's not. And it's back inside and same deal again. And what's happening down here? This is when Sellers are now coming in and building positions, and all it's doing is providing the fuel for that aggressive move, and then that aggressive move. Right again, data point, huge buy. See how we got the huge sell here. So think of buying and selling as fuel. So what happens there? All that selling 
uses up selling fuel. Off she goes to the races. Look at this, buying right at the top, aggressive lifting offers. What happens? The market rolls over. Why does it roll over really aggressively there? Open road. So all of the, I'm never just looking at this one view, right? It's uh, That's what those eight monitors are that I showed you. So it's taking all of that data. And this is what I'm doing by showing you this is, is, is letting you know that by specializing in one instrument, if that's all you're looking at, it forces you to see this stuff. Like if you're not looking at anything else and you're looking at all these different views, can you see how you'll start to put all these points of evidence together? And so that's what I call the multi, multi or many points of evidence trading. So it starts, you know, everyone sort of uses that, what do they call it, a top-down approach, you know, work their way in. For me, it's exactly the same thing. Um, but it's that understanding of defining a game, remember? So mine is very specifically providing an exit to traders who are ex urgently trying to get out of the market. It's urgent because it's moving really quickly. It's moving really quickly because it's the open road. And that is something that you can provide liquidity to, which is what I do. And then there's lots of stuff that happens in the market that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's badminton, right? It's just not my game. Or it's basketball. If, you know, if I'm a, a swimmer, I'm not interested in those other games. Um, so I'm hoping that that gave you a really good sense of what, um, how you can narrow down and rather than getting lost in markets thinking, oh, there's these gazillion different ways that you can look at it. Yeah, well, that's not very proactive and, and it's very difficult to, to develop any sort of niche and specialty. Whereas when you, when you narrow it down into a, a, a very um, specific defined game and you just focus on that, you just get really good at it. And that's what really the, the whole point of today is to show you by doing that, you do accelerate your rate of growth quite significantly. Uh, another thing on playbook trades, I haven't gone into where to buy and where to sell because that's in itself requires you know, obviously a lot more um, defined points, uh, elements that, that um, is not really what today's about, but you can watch all of those clips and you can see all of that. But my suggestion is you just focus on one or two to begin with, deal with just one. And I've given you this open road concept, also the C COT data, which is a starting point. And those two things combined with VWAP, volume weighted average price, which is a market bell, right? It's, it's something that is used, remember, getting back to what do the institutions and professionals use? You can start to see how they participate and you want to know where the big money is is causing havoc, i.e., losses to the less professional traders. And you don't you don't orchestrate this; they do all of that. You just want to know when they're doing it, and you want to jump along for the ride. Um, so with that, uh, I've really come down to if you want to ask me some questions or anything about what what we've covered, just you know, shoot, go for it. Pop it in the chat. What indicators are on your screen? Well, that's a, uh, <laughs> mate, I've got eight monitors. <laughs> How long have you got? But it's all auto flow based, okay? Um, you know what? I did something really incredibly advanced with the COT indicator. It's just the default settings. I actually have a different setting that I worked with myself, but that's just the default one, um, which I thought I'd show you because it's easy for you guys to recreate. So you should be able to do that immediately. It's just an indicator, COT in, in um, NinjaTrader. Just on that, remember, it's one piece of data. Why do I use many pieces of data? Well, how many pieces of data do you think your competition is using? So a trader who just looks at COT versus the trader who's looking at COT and 
lots of other things. Who do you think is going to be the winning trader between those two? All right. And all of these things, as I said, if you just um, pop along to bosstrading.com.au and uh, sign, you know, join, subscribe to the free weekly lessons, a lot of this I will expand upon in more detail than um, what what uh, I've, I've gone through today, which is very much, you know, the big picture, but absolutely without question, workable steps to improve your trading. Ah, how do I process all of that information? That's a really good question. So it's not all super quick, right? So a couple of those don't move that quickly because the time settings on them, are, or the tick settings, I should say, are, are quite big. So I don't, um, my, it's impossible for me to watch all, because I've got a lot of windows, all of them exactly at the same time. So if you can imagine in front of me, I've got what's my most important view, the DOM, because I, I tape read, right? And tape read is a really important skill. Like if you've got macro guys, right, who read the tape, you got to think to yourself, okay, I need to tape read. And so uh, the DOM, I'm sure many of you have found, is like quite intimidating when you look at it. It's like, man, I feel more comfortable watching a poking machine go around at 100 miles an hour, yeah? But you just have to understand that by applying yourself to it and not three DOMs on three different markets, that's nuts. Just one, in conjunction with those other things, you'll start to be able to put it together. I'm very fortunate because I was at a prop firm and I used to have, because we traded spreads in the 90 day um, bank bills, we had to watch lots of DOMs. But you know what happened when I was in a prop firm? And this is what I suggest. Yeah, I've got eight monitors. But when you started, you weren't given six monitors, you were given two. So you start, you just work with a few things at once. You can't watch all the stuff that I do straight off the cuff. So some of those things you want to do as part of your preparation beforehand. So like your COT, I don't need to look at the COT data um, once I'm in the market trading. That longer term view of profiles and things, um, I don't necessarily have to look at that every two minutes, right? So I'm looking at my execution charts I'm looking at my very, very short-term um, footprint charts. And um, then, um, you know, I go from there, right? Is that helpful? So for example, So I showed you a really um, like a big picture footprint chart, but this is an important view for me, along with the tape, along with my execution charts, right? Along with, like I so said, the time and sales, along with the DOM. Does that help answer the question? Any other queries? As I said, there are live trading footage of all of these things that I popped in links to. I'll, I'll give you those again, just in case you haven't. And that's a great place to start because at least, you know, you've got a basis from which to um, build from. All right, you can see how it's done. Uh, what are the skills I use? And there are those, that's the skills. All right. So both those combined. So the, the, the point there is that second link is the skills. And you can go and see some videos and think, well, what the hell is he doing? Like what what's the stuff he's 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 learned to do here? Well, 
uh, outline what the skills are. Yeah, by the way, it's not a list of just three things. Like it's an extensive list, but remember your objective. You wanted to get, move your career along quickly to professional trading. Oh, well, rather than try to do learn these skills on a whole lot of different markets, you'll get a much faster path to um, the results that you want by just learning the skills on one market. Right? Every market can it, it behaves very, very differently, as I'm sure many of you know. So tape reading, you know, the Aussie dollar is a different experience to tape reading crude oil. Right? So just focus on one. I'm not here to tell you what to trade, what like which instrument, um, but I would have I would give you this piece uh, suggestion. Really, really fast markets is not where you want to focus on. Some of the biggest traders in the world focus in trade the treasuries, right? They're not exactly as fast as natural gas, are they? Or crude oil, right? That's where the, some of the most significant profitable traders focus their, um, their trading on. All right, so if there aren't any more queries, as I said, if you, if you want to um, receive um, weekly trading lessons, then just pop along to the, the site at bosstrading.com. That, that's actually all I've done is taken a screenshot of the pop-up. All right. And I understand that there was some audio issues. Um, who knows why these things happen? I've done numerous things over the years with, with Ninja Trader and we've never had a problem before. Uh, and the thing is, I'm in exactly the same, like I haven't moved. I'm in the same home office. Everything's the same, right? And but it's just one of those things, unfortunately. And uh, you know, we could either sit here and be concerned about it, or we could just keep carrying on. Um, and and so, if there's nothing else, I'd just like to say thanks again for uh, particularly for your patience for dealing with audio issues. Um, and hopefully, you're able to add take some of this content away and start ma um, making that actionable, and um, you know, make inroads um, into your trading. And look, if you want to reach out to me via the site. I'm more than welcome to, to um, you know, see if I can provide some additional direction. Uh, so if there's nothing more, thanks. And uh, I'll hand back to um, Thomas. All right. Well, I want to thank again, Adam of Boss Trading for taking the time to share with us today. Everyone in attendance today will receive an on-demand recording of today's event. So keep an eye out for that email. If you enjoyed today's event, we'll hope you will join us in future sessions. We would like to remind you that the information provided was that of Boss Trading and not of NinjaTrader. All information was provided for educational purposes and should not be construed as trading advice. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see you in future webinars. Happy trading from all of us here at the NinjaTrader ecosystem.